Good morning friends, my name is Pramod. So today we will start with this engineering data. So today we will learn how to add a new material ANSYS. So before just telling all those things, I hope that you guys know all on the different types of material that we can add. Uh, so any kind of analysis you can choose it from here. For instance, I choose model analysis. So I double click on that. Uh, so I, this is basically a project schematic window. And this is the toolbox where you have analysis systems. And the individual components of analysis systems are available here in this component systems. So, uh, so I just drag it here. As you can see, after I drag it, uh, the, the, the steps in ANSYS follows the same as you saw in FEM problem. So it is first you list out the materials, what and all is going to be there in your uh, uh, product. It will be here in Intel data. So either you can uh, edit it from here or you can just create a engineering data from here directly. And then you can club this engineering data to this analysis. So let us see how to add a new material in ANSYS. So just double click on that. So once you double click, you get this window here. And, uh, and see, there are two options for you. Either if your material is some, if, uh, if your material is available in the standards, you can use it. Else you can add your own material here. For example, see if I want to add an aluminum alloy, so I just directly go to the engineering data sources, just click on that. And here I'll have this uh, classification of materials based on uh, this general material, this is non-linear, this is explicit. So I go to general materials and in that I have classification like structural steel, titanium alloy, so stainless steel, air, concrete, copper alloy, grey cast iron. So whatever material I want, I can just add it. Suppose I want to add stainless steel. So I just click on this plus button. And once I click this plus button, I get a book here, book symbol here. So once it, the book symbol comes here, it means that this, this material has been added to the data. So now if you just click on this again, now you'll find out that there is stainless steel added here. Suppose if the material which you want is not there in this list, what you can do is you can just simply add a material here. For example, I add aluminum. So it's AL. Now the main things which I need to define a material is for a simple structural analysis that is for finding stress strain you just need to add density that is to define the mass of the object the second is isotropic elasticity which consists of uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio this bulk modulus and shear modulus will be computed on the base of Young's and Poisson's ratio you can choose which two values to enter so based on the two the other two will be automatically derived and you have the units here, so you can enter in whatever units you have the value. Suppose this is density of aluminum, 2700. So I just enter a rough value here. Um, enter in MPA, that is, and the poison ratio. So as you can see, when I enter this poison ratio, the bulk modulus and shear modulus is computed automatically. So these three values are, now, now you can see the question mark is gone from here. So these three parameters are important for doing any basic structural analysis problem. And, uh, and, uh, and this isotropic elasticity pertains to isotropic material. So if, when I say material is isotropic, it means that the properties are same in all directions. That is Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of the material are same in all directions. Orthotropic elasticity means the properties are different in different directions, but they have a plane of symmetry. Like you can take wood as an example. When given a lateral load, it will withstand, but when given a tensile pull, when a longitudinal pull, it will fall off. So it means that the properties are different in different directions. So orthotropic metal is defined by, you have to enter three uh, young modulus in three directions, Poisson's ratio in three directions and shear modulus in three directions. You have Generally what happens in the uh, isotropic case, the uh, uh, shear modulus is, uh, is computed exactly as half of the Young's modulus. So in this case it is not the same so that's why you need to enter shear modulus in all three directions. And then is anisotropic elasticity. This means that the material is different, the properties are different in different directions 
but they don't have a plane of symmetry so if you have any material which is anisotropic it would have a stiffness matrix of 6 cross 6 you need you just need to enter those values here so it will automatically compute all the other parameters and so these are the three kinds of material which are there and uh, if you want to delete any parameter from here you just need to click on this d column here you just click on this so it goes off and now i click on this orthotropic elasticity it goes off now i'll uncheck this isotropic elasticity so i get this isotropic elasticity okay now the next factor that that is if you are doing uh, uh, for example if you are doing a thermal analysis problem so what you would require is another factor called as k that is thermal conductivity and in that also you have isotropic and orthotropic so you can just click on this and you, you can enter the value here in terms of uh, watt per meter degree celsius so you can enter this parameter suppose i say it's 21 for example so that is defined so this is must when you do a thermal analysis when i say thermal analysis it is for finding heat flux and temperature distribution and the inputs will be in terms of conduction convection and radiation so that is to be known and the next thing is if you are doing a coupled field analysis problem like for example if you are uh, if you are uh, if you want to find out uh, the uh, temperature giving rise to stress or temperature giving rise to displacement okay so in normal cases what happens when you heat a bar it expands but when you but when you provide a, a blockage for that what happens is the stress generates there okay so for that you use this isotropic secant coefficient of thermal expansion that is basically alpha which we use uh, in our thermal problems so uh, this is kind of combination of a thermal problem and a structural problem it is temperature giving rise to stress so you just need to enter this parameter for finding out that so once that is done so these are the basic uh, uh, parameters which will which we will be uh, using ahead and the next thing is strength here uh, in this strength you have tensile yield compressive yield tensile ultimate compressive ultimate so these are the four stress which we are going to use if our material is going to be a brittle material then we will be using tensile ultimate and compressive ultimate so we just double click on this and we just enter the parameters of that what is tensile ultimate and what is compressive ultimate and if our material is going to be a uh, ductile material we are going to use yield and compressive yield so uh, uh, i hope that you must be knowing why we use yield and uh, ultimate because in uh, in brittle material you don't have any yield it's directly it's going to fail there but in some but in uh, ductile materials you have substantial yield before it fails so that's why we consider yield in uh, uh, ductile and this in brittle so so this is how you add a material now so once you add a material here uh, now see i just close it uh, now once all parameters are entered you get this you, you have to remove this uh, question mark symbol so for this question mark symbol you need to enter some parameters here i see this parameter is not entered so i just remove this parameter so now as you can see this symbol has gone so now i just directly go back to this and this data is already entered so now i can just go to the next is what is called as dormitory but the actual material which I am going to assign is in the model. Here just I am creating which materials are to be displayed is what I am entering now. Okay. So I hope this session was useful. So next next session we will see how to model the geometry. Thanks. Yeah.